Hey guys, I might be transmitting blind here, I think, but uh, I'm going to count you in. is going on boys and girls welcome back to wheel to wheel we are here for our first enduro of season eight at suzuka raceway suzuka circuit in japan it's a really really grueling circuit it's super technical it's quite long and we're here doing it 28 times over uh, joining me tonight in the comms box is a queensland devil racer again good evening mate how are you good, good evening all and also on part comms, but mainly visuals, is Ando787. Good evening, Ando. G'day, g'day. So it's got to be a tough race tonight, boys. Have you got any picks? Have you been keeping your eye on anyone? Devil, you've been brushing up on our, on our wheel-to-wheel stats. Who have you got your eye on? 
Yeah, well, our, our two Division One drivers tonight are uh, Jonesy and Squidley, uh, who are, are ranked 12 and 13, uh, respectively, in Division One. Uh, so they're obviously our, our top-seeded drivers. They're going to be two to keep an eye on. Uh, but we have got a, a fair battle for Division Two with 6th, uh, 7th, 8th and 9th from Division Two in this race, being uh, Suit Lad uh, in 6th, Cloakade in 7th, ZD in 8th, and Scooter 82 in ninth. So those four are going to be hard at it uh, and, and wanting to take home the points from each other. Um, also from Division 2, we have uh, Troy HQ uh, and we have Ben, uh, Wheel to Wheel Ben. And, uh, and from Division 3, we have Untouchables, Dodgy, uh, Spence and Corbin. Uh, and of course, Daz Patron, who uh, is a newcomer to the league this year. Uh, so the, obviously Jonesy and Squidley are the two to watch, but there is going to be a heated battle amongst our Div uh, two uh, Div two drivers tonight as well. Yeah, there certainly is. Like you've, you've mentioned off some, some or rattled off some really good names there. Uh, Squidley Jonesy being a couple of our uh, season Div one drivers. Uh, Scooter eighty two has also been a, a historic Div one driver, so he's he's certainly not to be counted out. We do have a couple of uh, drivers here on controller tonight as well. So CCH currently in fourth, uh, Team Shake and Bake. I'm sure Ando, you'll be wanting to uh, show off your teammates as much as you can. Absolutely. He's he's on controller tonight, so he's probably going to be a little a little disadvantaged. I mean, it, it just goes to show that you don't need a big fancy setup to to join our ranks at wheel to wheel and get involved. It's it's really quite nice to uh, to see a few drivers you know, just repping the old controller, but it does have its limitations. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to manage tyre wear, um, but your, your pace is certainly still on it. So realistically, you, you just go hard out and, and as quick as you can, and hopefully you stay on track. So uh, yeah, between him and Wheel to Wheel Ben, they're, they're both control the game tonight. So big shout out to those boys. And, and obviously tyre wear and, and fuel management are very important in these longer races. Uh, but on, on this track, in, with 28 laps and in these cars, I feel that tyre wear is, is significantly more important than fuel. What about you, Captain? Yeah, it's it's certainly one of those things. The more you manage your tyres, the more that you'll be able to keep your lap times consistent. It's it's certainly one of those things that I've um, been able to strike a, a decent balance with in terms of, of not going too hard too fast and being able to keep those lap times consistent. You know, you, say it's a 10 lap or 12 lap stint and, and you, you're going really hard for the first four or five laps, you can really take the edge off your tyres and yeah. the, the gains that you go or that you get from going really quick is, um, is, is definitely lost when you haven't got that tie life and, and you lose out in the later half of the stint. So. Sorry to butt in, guys. Yeah. I think uh, Ben just wants sure. a thumbs up from us just to say we're ready to go. I don't think they know uh, that we're recording it. Okay, so we're we're recording, um, not not needing to go live. I think that's the reason why a couple of people are, yeah. are holding up. Affirmative. Cool. Right. I will let them know. Okay. But yeah, I, I've got a little dark horse for today, guys. I'm liking Clocade. Bit biased. Yeah, yeah I've been but, uh, yeah, been practicing a lot, and I like his pace. And he's been setting some very good times. I've been watching him consistently in the two o sixes. So, yeah, he will be uh, certainly a dark horse there to, to rattle the cages of Jonesy and Squidley. Yeah, you can't yeah, go but... past your, um, your regulars, Div 1 regulars, Scooter, I like. Um, he's always quick. Yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm actually surprised to see Scooter down here. He may have, I think he missed the first round, but he may have had a, a you know, gotten caught up in some drama in, in round two. So he's usually a, a regular Div 1. So, yeah, like you say, it's, it's kind of surprising to see him see him in uh, our second split. But then again, he might have a, a very clean run at things and, and take out take out our race. So qualifying, getting underway. I think we've to spoken about the... the main people that we're going to keep an eye out for but what do you think time wise is going to take out the pole I, I think it needs to be a, a high 206 um, to maybe a low 207 depending on uh, the run that people get but certainly uh, the slipstream will have an effect here too so positioning on your outlap in qualifying is very important 
Um, there's there's two very long straights here where slipstream can make a significant difference to your to your overall time. Yeah, you're spot on. If you can time it perfectly, you can get in a really good spot with slipstream and, and save yourself those five or tenths. So if uh, first round is anything to go by, then we will be in for a very tight qualifying. I think this field at Catalonia for round one was split by about 0.8 of a second. Catalonia is not that short of a track either. So considering the field is, is that tight, I would expect to see them that that close again. But honestly, I'm thinking pole could go down to a mid, possibly even a, a, towards a low six, 206.3, maybe 206.2, depending on if, if someone can get that slip and, and line it all up. Yeah, I agree, I've mate. I'm, I'm, I've seen my teammates doing 2065s this week, so someone like a scooter mm. might pull off a 2061. I reckon that's my number I'm predicting. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's unreasonable at all. But what we might do while they're while they're getting themselves sorted out on track, I think the order has sorted itself out. So we'll jump up to first if we can, Ando. He's, uh, we'll jump up with uh, Untouchables. He okay. has gone gotten out of the pit box nice and early so he's repping the Milo team for Sunday casuals. There's a few of them that have that have made their way up into Div 1 now as well so they'll certainly be one to watch out for this round. There's some very quick drivers there. Uh, followed behind Jones, uh, sorry, followed behind Untouchables is Josie so he's, he's my teammate. He is a regular Div 1 but he's had a, a bit of tough luck in the first couple of rounds so I'm sure he'll be looking to make amends here. He's he's uh, been showing some, some fantastic pace and quality and certainly been putting in the practice time, so sending some, some good vibes to Jonesy for a great qualifying. And just behind him as they head through the Casio Triangle for the first time is Wheel to Wheel Ben. He is making, I think, his first round appearance of Season 8, wrapping that chrome livery in the 86 there. Yeah, followed by Squidley, who's just out of the uh, draft of Wheel to Wheel Ben at the moment, so not being able to take advantage of that. Uh, and Cloakade, who was uh, mentioned a couple of times pre-qualifying as being one to watch. Uh, Zidi, however, is right behind Cloakade, and he has the capability to stay with him and get the pull down the, that, the main back straight uh, at the moment. So if he could stay with Cloakade throughout this lap, he could be posting uh, pole on this lap uh, but also following him is Scooter 82 as you've mentioned uh, Div 1 regular and racing tonight he will be in uh, ZD slipstream so keep an eye on him as well yeah absolutely Scooter is in a prime position here oh we see somebody Ooh, in the background Corbin, Corbin, has, Corbin has lost it Corbin, unfortunate on his out lap, on his first hot lap, sorry. So he's going to be looking to, to regather there and you see him get a little bit shaky. Uh, we'll jump back up to eight, so we keep our order with Troy. I believe he's Privateer this season, with a nice red and black livery. He's, he's shown pace. He's certainly improved over the last couple of seasons and it's, it's great to see him uh, holding ranks in, in second split. In ninth position, we have our first member of E-Course, so, sorry, second member of E-Course, so it's Suplab. Absolutely love their liveries that they've put out this year, and their colour scheme and, and Miami vibes are, are top notch. So congratulations again on a, on a very, very well-presented team. Uh, in tenth place as well, we have Dodgy. He's our second 13R rep of the night. Uh, so I've just jumped onto him. He's just touched the Astro, Astro Turf at, uh, at Spoon Corner there and Takes gone his first off. victim. It does. Uh, uh, at the risk of jinxing it, which it looks like I already have, it's it's going to going to claim a few more people, unfortunately. So, um, jumping, I think we will go to eleventh. The Spence, the, Spence. the Milo Milo rep there. Uh, yeah, but he's just, just come through on Corbin. Uh, Des Patron and uh, and Dodgy uh, bringing up the rear. But who have we got? Squidly has there posted. Go. The squid jumping out on top by just under a tenth of a second with a 206.4, so very close to what we expected of the night. However, we have seen a couple of people that should have had decent laps uh, come off in, in their first hot lap, so uh, the pressure is going to be on them to get a decent lap here and hopefully come through with, with something decent. So might see this board shuffle up just a little bit more. And like you said earlier, seven one hundredths between first and second and two one thousand 
distance between <laughs> second and third. Oh my god, so, that's close. <laughs> yeah, how close is this? So all the way back to uh, Spence in tenth, who is uh, one and a half seconds. Suit Lad, who's one second behind in ninth. Uh, this is going to be a tight field once uh, we finish qualifying here. Yeah, absolutely. It is a top five is split by just under half a second, so five tenths. Uh, so a, a tenth of driver average is incredibly close. So his driver certainly putting on a on a show for us tonight. As we see uh, Jonesy in fourth, he might just have the slipstream of untouchables in front of him. He's, he will. Yeah, he's posted a great lap time already. So we'll see if he can uh, get himself further up the field. Oh, he needs a good exit here, and he's yes, he's. He's, he's got, got a good exit here. Yes. Makes just the outer slip, but then again, he might be in a prime position here if he gets a good run through 130R and into Casio Triangle. I'm sure he can try and make up that little bit extra. We see Squidly, is all, Squidly is also tucked under the uh, the rear end of Wheel to Wheel Ben at the moment, so he got a toe yes. down that back straight, and he's about to come through. The Squidly might be on a try here. He might be looking to improve. Yes. You see him come through the Casio Triangle, gets a great exit on the start-finish straight. He's tucking it in nice and close, shortening that track off as much as he can. We see oh, him and he's better. Hit. 2063. Well done, Squidly. Fantastic effort. He's the only one to improve on his second lap so far. Jonesy doesn't improve in the end. Troy has improved with a 2068. So that brings him up to fifth place. Soup Lad also improves. Oh, what else have we got towards the end here? I think Dodgy Spence patron. We also see ZD doing a, doing a lap by himself. Yep, so Corbin's Spence improves. Up to yeah, Corbin improves as well. Doing a lot of shuffling around here in the mid pack. Uh, so ZD, uh, sorry, patron is coming yeah, through Casio Triangle now with ZD. Yep. Even the back end of this field, between 10th, 11th, and 12th, is is half a second, basically. Uh, sorry, half a half 10th. So Patron doesn't improve, neither does Dodgy, neither does Zidi. So it looks like our grid is set with the 2063, taken out by Squidly. Very, very good qualifying from, from this lot, and extremely close once again. Yeah, absolutely, and, and the Squidly the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did well done. Yeah, hit the nail on that head. If only I can do that come 7.30 in top split, Nando, I think I'll be in a, in a pretty good spot. Uh, you know what? I think we'll, we'll stick on with, uh, with Squidly up in, in first place there, I think. Okay. It'll be interesting to see... Uh, have, we, have we got what everyone's starting on? Can we see... Yes, everyone would have qualified on softs and, and looking to make that They've first in. So they're, the softs. they're out. Yep. Scooter's got a fantastic oh. start on Ben. He's going to try and make it too wide. He thinks better of it and tucks right there. And Squidly in a fantastic spot here. We see somebody go off in the background there. Unfortunate first turn instance. Squidly's kept it nice and clean. Looking like everyone's falling back into a nice single form line. There's, there's a big race here, so we don't need to go uh, throwing anybody off just yet. So it was Troy. He's, he's just dropped down to 13th. He went wide at, at first corner there. Yeah, but all in all, fairly neat through there. I have noticed as Patron is the only one running on mediums for the first stint. Uh, he's currently in 12th position. Uh, but it's all single file at the moment. Everyone playing the calm and collected game on the first lap, which is obviously the smart thing to do. It certainly is. It's good to see Squidly off to a nice clean start as well. And this is only going to help Wheel to Wheel Ben and Scooter behind him in second and third. Those guys will certainly be looking to do some short shifting, stick in that slip and, and try and get a, a good race. Potentially even jump them in the pit. So strategy has been something of a, of a hot topic here at the moment. Well, there's a lot of talk about doing a, a one-stop split it down the middle, doing 14 laps on softs, 14 laps of mediums, but there is a, it's a that's a big ask, and the big time that you lose there. We see Scooter getting very friendly with Ben on the exit of Scooter as well. Uh, but yeah, yeah and the two stops certainly looks like to go again. Yeah, definitely. I saw Scooter do a one-stop uh, practice run during the week, and uh, his times were uh, dropped off rather significantly. But uh, in this situation, Captain, uh, where, where would you prefer to be? Would you prefer to be Squidly out in front, or would you prefer to be uh, one, one in the train following him, saving fuel? 
it's it's super tough. It, it really depends on the person who's in front. Squidly is is by no means a slouch, as we can see. He's just starting to pull a, a very small gap on on uh, the bend there. So yeah, if I had if I had a quick driver in front of me, I would certainly be looking to tuck in behind, use advantage of that slipstream, and potentially save that that touch more fuel and jump into the pits. So the hassle with Ben is that he is on controller, so we are going to see a little bit more tyre wear out of him. Uh, I would expect to see him drop towards uh, the end of this stint, unfortunately. Yeah, well, it's noticeable already after one lap, the extra tyre that he's having to use. Uh, yeah. But in third place, Scooter82 is putting all sorts of uh, he is all over heat it. on the back of Ben at the moment. It, it is super tough when a driver is, or when we have two drivers that are very close in, in terms of their capabilities and, and their driving style, it is very tough to make a pass around here. Um, yep. Especially when Ben has that sleep stream with car in front, you just don't have that overlap. So these guys are keeping it extremely close, all the way back to, oh, geez, if we go back to 50, it's, like a it's one and a half seconds. He's making a but, move. Here we go. We see Scooter make a dive. Sorry, Ben's going protective. Scooter's going around the outside. Gets that better drive out of the hairpin. And gets gets in front of Ben on, uh, on the exit of, of the hairpin. Nice work. Well. So that's going to be one of the main overtaking points tonight is, is through there. We've obviously got uh, the Casio Triangle and uh, Turn 1 as being another one. But there, there are quite a few good overtaking points on this track. So with these guys at the moment driving like a train, uh, as the race wears on and they get a bit, bit impatient, we should see a bit more action, I would think. But at, at the moment, they all seem to be quite happy to tuck under the rear wing. Uh, yeah, and, and follow the car in front. Yeah, certainly. I think Jonesy is going to be keen to make a move on Ben here and, and stick up with Scooter and Squidly. So if he can get the... Oh, we see Untouchable's going for a dive on Cloakate as well. Forces that move and gets it done. They're still going too wide on the exit of the Casio triangle here. It's going to be an interesting run down to turn one as Cloakate just gets the inside run. They're going to make a, try and make it too Three wide. wide. Suicide's showing his face as well. With three wide, as we see the first first group of four snake their way through. We and see, that... yeah, Cloakade, Untouchable, Suit Lad, Corbin, they're all going very deep into turn one. And, and that just shows how close these guys are. Just that little bit of battling that they did there has now allowed a one and a half second gap to that front four, and they've broken the toe. Yeah, it certainly has. Oh, and, and, Jonesy's. Oh, and we see Untouchables has... Oh no, that's full of drama there unfortunately, he's right on the racing line as Troy's coming around with a lot of speed here, he's giving him racing room, Troy's, Troy's uh, able to pick up back into 12s. Um, I was on board with him then when uh, he spun, so we caught it. Yeah, unfortunate front touchables there, but still a long race, he has picked up a little bit of front aero damage, but we only run, uh, run our settings on light this season, so that will heal itself, and in fact it already has, so... Uh, Untouchables look to, to make a, a comeback in the latter half of his race. Well, I've, I've been watching Cloakade since that accident, who uh, come out in, in front of that second group and at two seconds behind Jonesy, and he's, he's nudged it down by half a second since then. Yeah, he has. I think Jonesy is potentially being held up by Ben here, as we can see a bit of a gap between Scooter in second and Ben in third. So that, that gap has just opened out to about a second, and looking at the tyre wear differences, Ben's are, even on, even though we're only on lap three, Ben's are that, that first wear, unfortunately. So I'm sure Jonesy is going to want to make a move or he will continue to play the long game, save that extra fuel and, and look to make a jump in the pits. Well, if he doesn't, if, if he's going to make a move, he needs to do it soon because Scooter 82 is a second up the road. He's already yeah. out of the draft of, of Ben. So uh, if he wants to stay in, in contact with our leaders, then uh, he needs to make the move sooner rather than later. He certainly does. Looking at the way Jones is shifting as well, he might be lining himself up for moving to turn one, but I just don't think he's got it. He's still half a second away as they cross the start-finish line. It's just not going to be enough. I think he and, might and, be better off than Sullivan having and in fifth, Cloakade has brought it down to uh, 1.4 now. He is he is bringing in that gap he between, certainly between is. him and, and Jonesy, and, and he's bringing Suitlad in yeah. sixth and Spence in seventh with him. 
Yep. So that that little battle pack that you mentioned earlier has certainly certainly sorted itself out, and suit laden spins are being able to tail on the back and locate its pace here, and really shave that gap down. It's down to, to nearly one point one point three one point two seconds. So I'm wondering if uh, if Jonesy is going to be able to make a pass anytime soon, and, and really hope to pull that gap back out and let Ben try and. Uh, oh, as we see Jonesy shelling the nose into Degna one, trying to get Ben offside here. He's getting a little bit squirrely on the exit. Ben's just going to be speed compromised. He's going to open the door for Jonesy as we see him just tuck in front of all his wire hander into the hairpin. So Jonesy is free to try and chase down Scooter, while Ben has now got this, this group of three behind him with Locate, Sue, Lab and Spence all haul on his tail. And, and now the two leading drivers are two seconds out from Jonesy. So he's got his work cut out for him now to bring those guys back in. Um... I think Jersey's biggest biggest worry at the moment here is breaking that slip to Ben, which looks like it's already happened. He needs to keep his head down and focus on his own race at this point in time. If he can reel in Scooter, which he's already done by about two tenths. Oh, then, back uh, in eighth, to... Corbin has just come off at the spoon uh, and now has Dodgy right on his tail and should get him down this straight, I would imagine. Unfortunate there. It's going to be a very tough move. He's definitely thinking a better of it, but it looks like he's just giving him a nudge or he's trying to save that little bit of fuel. Going too wide through 130i is a very big ask. Dodgy is sitting behind still. He's got the better and brakes, but just is not able to make it pass. I would almost say that was happy to stay behind at the moment, Captain. He didn't yeah. even try to make a move there, to be honest. No, he didn't show his nose. He didn't try to get anyone offside. I wonder if he is, okay. is playing it smart, realising that the Casio triangle is a very tough ask as an overtake, and he might be trying to line himself up here as we go through very close to him. But no, following on, following on from those guys, uh, something that's showing it to be a bit of interest here. And in eleventh, Daz Patron, our only medium tyre runner, currently thirteen seconds behind the leader after leaders after four laps, uh, and ahead of Untouchables and ahead of Troy HQ. Yeah, so Untouchables so, and Troy having some early on uh, drama there. They, they were the, the two that did come off track, so they've caught back up to, to Patron there and are looking to get a, get a pass and reconsolidate on their soft stint. So, yeah, it's a very good good point that you've can that or that you made there, that Patron is, is able to hold up these soft runners and give himself a better chance in the, in the latter half of this race. Yeah, and from previous races, Patron doesn't make it easy for people to get past him. They, they have to earn that pass. And at the moment, with him on mediums, uh, he doesn't have to give up that position. They are racing for position. Just because the other guys are on soft tyres, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't give them any right to that position. But, geez, this is wrecking their race, isn't it, if they can't get past him soon? Yeah, it's certainly going to hurt them. I mean, they're burning up their softs while doing medium stint pace. It's, it's really not a good, not a good position. But uh, we'll jump back up into fourth. Uh, Okade has been able to make the move on Ben and, and Gaffian by about two and a half seconds. So I think Ben might be struggling there with his with his tie usage. We see as Suit Lake getting a good run out of Stern as well, going side by side with Ben and run down to one thirty R. Yeah, and Spence is following with him. Certainly is. So they're going to go too wide through here. No, Suit Lake has just been able to get the edge and and get his nose in front. Ben's just. So I can't believe he held that. He's just touched the grass. Spencer's going to make this interesting, trying to go too wide. Ben covers it well into the triangle. I reckon Spencer's going to be on for a good run down this straight and, and follow suit laps through Ben. So, oh yeah, unfortunate for Ben, but he's, he's really been dropping off in this first five laps. Yeah, and like you said, that's the, the deficit of the controller with uh, burning through your tyres a lot quicker. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, and I've noticed on this track with the tyres too, they, they they tend to hold their performance, but once they're gone, they drop off rather quickly. They certainly do, and it's it's very tough as well in the sense that if you if you go off track or if you get dirty tyres, you you take that little extra edge off them, and it can really play with the, the, the levels of grip that you do have. So keeping it clean and, and consistent Ooh. is certainly the biggest battle. Back up the front, guys. Uh, Scooter 82 is all over the back end of Squidly now. Yeah, Scooter with better fuel management there as well. So being in that slip has certainly been able to, to help Scooter on the fuel. I mean, he has used more tyres, so those two might actually be a lot more even than we think. 
Jonesy in the uh, third. Tires, I think. Yeah, Scooter might be going for a slightly longer stint than what Scooter is. We could see Scooter try and go for an undercut, maybe lap nine, lap eight or nine, depending on how long he wants to run on, on the mediums. Yeah, the undercut ball got stronger, yeah, hey. Yeah, proven how difficult it has been to, to get overtakes done. It, it could certainly play pay dividends. Well, in, in third, guys, Jonesy has brought it down. Uh, it was at 1.6, Teth 1.7 now, and his tyres are looking magnificent. His are some of the best in the field. He has used a lot of fuel. Yeah, Jonesy, with that, with that probably another 7 or 8% fuel burn on Scooter and and oh, we see Scooter showing the nose into Ooh. the triangle, thinks the better of it, Squidly defending just that little bit uh, under brakes there and, uh, and gets a really good exit still, so Squidly being able to just pull the gap enough that I don't think Slip will be able to make a pass into the into first turn. We haven't seen any penalties in this race yet either. They, uh, the Casio triangle at the end is rather brutal on the penalties. You can easily mm. cop a three-second penalty there, which you then have to burn down the front straight. Yeah, and burning that down the front straight, it, it may end well only, but three, three and a half seconds is still giant, and then burning it on the front straight, you end up losing at least five and a half, six seconds worth of, of race positions. So certainly something to avoid is, is getting a penalty there, or getting a penalty anywhere, really, but, but especially there, like I say. Back in uh, seventh, Wheel to Wheel Ben is now coming under the attack from Dodgy, so he's he's really falling down the the queue now. Dodgy in, in eighth, and and then Corbin is is not far down the road from him, so this race could end up uh, going from worse to or bad to worse for Ben at the moment. Yeah, he's he's oh. certainly got enough pace to yeah, Corbin in the background <laughs> just getting wide right on the we, exit of Degna too. Very dicey We need to stop. Yeah. We need to stop saying his name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we just need to embrace the uh, the complicated curse. It doesn't matter who we talk about. I'm sure somebody is uh, is going to come up to it. So Dodgy in eighth, trying to make it too wide here on the run down to Stone. It's going to be a very brave manoeuvre here if he can get it. Looking like Ben's made it a little bit easy for him and has tucked back in. Dodgy with a fantastic braking manoeuvre. Gets it with that additional tyre life. It's a smooth run onto the back straight as well. Fantastic overtake there for seven by Dodgy. Back up in the lead, Squidly and Scooter 82 are still going at it. Scooter is right under his rear wing at the moment. Uh, no, not showing the nose. Happy to follow along. And yeah, Scooter's playing and smart preserve game, a bit of fuel. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it, is, so. Uh, it is allowing Jonesy in third to catch up. He's pulled down another half a second, so he's at 1.2 behind them now and uh, almost in the draft. So he'll be... Ooh. This could be a... Good is <laughs> making a move for first here in the first turn. That's a very it. risky move on high it. speed. A fantastic yeah, effort by both drivers to keep it clean through there at such high pace as well. It didn't look like either of them wanted to give an inch, but Scooter getting that getting that first position there off Squid. So now maybe the tides have turned. Squidly can start looking to save that little extra fuel and, and potentially come back in front after pit stop. Yeah, and look, just that, that one move was a, a two-tenth difference there for Jonesy. So he's two-tenths up on him just through that corner. Only one second behind now. So this is about to become a three-way battle for the lead. Yeah, it certainly is. I wonder how much pace difference there is between Scooter and Squid if Scooter is able to now break out just that little bit from Squid and pull him along. But it looks like Jonesy is starting to make a good count. Start, starting to make a move where it will go. Yeah, well, he's another two tenths. So four yeah, tenths on this lap so far. He's got the great hairpin as well, and he's only just fallen outside of the sleep stream zone there. So this is going to be critical for Jonesy to to catch up to these leading leading pair. Uh, Jonesy's tyres are about even with Squid's, and both Squid and Jonesy have slightly better tyres than Scooter. So yeah, interesting well, nice to see. Jonesy. Yeah, very interesting to see that Scooter's tyres are a little bit worse considering he had to follow behind Squid for about seven months. 
Really However, weird. Jonesy has used a, a notable amount more fuel than these leading leading pair as well. So he'd probably be down maybe ten percent compared to those two. So yeah, that's that's, that's only gonna hurt. Yeah, it's yeah. it's not great when it comes time to hit. So we see Squid, Shell knows as well. Squid having to go defensive into Cassio Triangle. Pulls back in just just thinks better of it. And, 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 now, and now it is a three-way train. Certainly is. So that move by Squid has certainly introduced uh, Jonesy into that sleep stream. So maybe that was that was his plan and he can now save that extra fuel, but who knows? It's it's certainly looking like nobody wants to give an inch and, and everyone wants to hang on to the front. So after nine laps of an enduro, one AI enduro here tonight, we can see the first three drivers are split by about half a second. Fantastic driving by these and we have And we have pit stops. ZD on mediums is into the pits, as well as Troy HQ and Corbin. They're all into the pits. Here we go. So I think ZD might be coming out of the pits just now. Oh no, don't tell me. I I've lost ED on screen. Yeah, yeah. so have I. They're... Oh no. We may be having pit glitches here. I can't see Troy and I can't see Corbin neither. So those who have pitted. No, we've got a pit glitch, it's gentlemen. It. Oh no, I might oh. see fortunate. This is for this again, Gran Turismo rearing its ugly head ugly head. We yeah, have wow. just cops a giant pit glitch a third of this race through that means nothing but a restart unfortunately gentlemen um, I'm going to jump on to the party chat and call it we're going to see Ben coming through already um, this is this is unfortunate for yeah folks. such a clean start such but yeah a, such super a unfortunate race for, I tell you what a couple of guys will be happy though <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah they will be so, happy yeah. guys these opening lap incidents are certainly going to be happy they get another shot at it. So, Troy, yeah, this Corbin, is yeah. going to be tough. I wonder if anybody's... It doesn't look like anyone's blue screen just yet. No, it looks like everyone's been able to, to stay in the lobby, which is nice. Um, unfortunately, though, we do have a pit glitch. That means we have to restart our race. Are we doing... Um, we're not doing qualifying again, are we? No, we won't be doing quali again. Um, we will just have a, a, I believe, a manual grid set by wheel to wheel burn there. Um, yep. As we see, I think he's changing time to try and. Uh, no, sorry, he's just changed practice race, hoping to um, give this lobby a reset, and and hopefully we don't have any more issues. Yeah. So what's next on the calendar, guys? After this one, back into the Ooh, group three. Question: We are back into the group threes, but I can't remember what track we're going to. If I pull it up Dragon real quick, Trail. Uh, Dragon Trail Gardens. Yeah, yeah. There we go. So that's that's uh, probably going to be one of the better tracks for the likes of myself and the Hyundai Genesis. Um, that one. That, that car tends to not have as, as great a high speed, so hoping to look at a a good round there. But uh, How's it yeah, we see tires, the XL. Yeah, the old the old XL is is actually quite good on tyres, or at least it is for me. Um, Jones and I have been doing track, isn't it? Practice. Yeah, it certainly is. It's one that you really have to look out for your for your front left <laughs> through the um, through that quadruple right hander. It, it can certainly shave valuable tenths off of your time there and come under attack. From people who can have to take care of their tyres a little better. So, yeah, that one's certainly going to be a, a race to keep their eye on or keep our rides on um, as we make our way through next week. Hopefully we get this lobby sorted out in a minute and we'll be back underway. But, yeah, unfortunately that, that first half an hour or so of racing is, is now down the drain and we have to uh, we have to restart. Yeah. ZD's blue screened. No, ZD's still in, but it looks like Corbin has blue screen. So we do have one victim of, uh, of okay. further Gran Turismo dramas. And we'll need to give it another minute for him to check back in. And then also uh, for Ben to set the grid according yeah. to qualifying results. It's really strange, isn't it? I didn't see anyone jumping around. It looked like everyone had good connections. Yeah, yeah, it certainly did. Um, I've I've not experienced a pit, grip, pit glitch for for quite some time. Actually, we we were having some some big dramas with them, and, and uh, you know they were ruining quite a few races throughout our season five off season. But 
Yeah, it's unfortunate to see here, but we, yeah. we will go again. We will get a, a second crack at it. So Untouchables and Troy are certainly going to be, uh, be on the happy side of this camp. Yeah, I, I wonder if any of the drivers will change up their strategy uh, this time. We only had one that I saw start on mediums, which was Daz Patron. Do you think uh, any of the other drivers will go, well, this time I'm going to I'm going to have a crack on mediums and, and see how we go with at the I start? Know, I, 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 I honestly think that running the mediums when you're light on fuel is going to be better. So I've got a feeling maybe Patron might change his strat. Uh, yeah, okay. As you're saying that, we do see Zidi who's jumped onto the medium, taking advantage of this restart here. So I would I would say this is in well within their rights too, because the the possibility of changing tyres towards the end of qualifying certainly gives them the opportunity to change to, to qualify on softs and then start the race on medium. So it just depends on if you get that that good first lap. But, yeah, um, I don't believe it's it's outside the rules to change in this scenario, is it, uh, Captain? No, no, look, I don't think so because everyone is, uh, you know, we still have that same right. At the end of qualifying, you can swap yourself around. Um, yep. I mean, in this scenario, you would only get one hot lap in and then you would have to exit back to the pits, change onto mediums and then and then wait, wait it out. So it is a bit risky uh, only getting one lap in on qualifying when, as we can see, it's been very, uh, very crucial to qualify up front of the field. So, yeah, taking advantage of this scenario would, would certainly play yeah, you out. You never a know, little a, little a couple of guys at the back might might switch to mediums. You never know. Yes, I think Zidi is the only one who has made the change. We see patrons still sticking with his mediums, so it looks like most other drivers are on track, and Ben is, is sorting out the grid as we speak, and has just kicked off the final. So round two of uh, round three, we will not have any pick glitches this time, and we'll, right. we'll get past lap nine. Who do we want to jump on board with? Uh, I think it's going to be down to, to Squid and uh, who else was on pole. I think Ben, sorry, Squid was on pole and Ben was also on the front row. So, um, you know, most of the field kept it nice and tidy. I would say we'll, we'll stick on with the okay. front runners. It looks like everyone's in their respective spot from what I can see. As we're waiting for those lights to turn on. As the revs come up, everyone's ready to go. Lights out and we're off. Here we go. Squidly's got away well. Great start again. Ben tucking right in, trying to get that slip. The rest of the field are still looking too wide. Squid again with that good start, taking that lead into first turn. Squid tucking in behind Ben as well as they're all getting close to a single fight. Or Corbin and Cloquet being teammates who are they're giving each other a little bit of room there. As we see, yeah, the rest of the field is, is tiny. It's easy making a move on the outside of uh, Patron there, where it, it then becomes quickly the inside. So Zidi and Patron off on the mediums, already showing their fighting, fighting nature for 13th place, uh, sorry, for 12th place. All right, so this race begins up the front as the, as the last one did, Squidly uh, in the lead, and Will Will Ben chasing. Um, Hopefully he can get a bit more life out of his tyres this time and uh, and avoid that degrade that he had way down the field in the first game. But yes. uh, he's already got Scooter. Scooter up the outside. Scooter oh, is, is he going to make it stick? He is. He's around the outside. Wow. 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 Fantastic driving from both of these. these you go to a big lane if you like, here. guys. Yeah, definitely on board for that. We see Jonesy as well. Going oh. side by side with Ben. No, he's thinking better of it than no, Tokyo. Scooter now through Digna 1. He's going to get a good run out of Digna 2 here, isn't he? Yeah, he so he's uh, got an excellent run. He's going to capitalise on it now. Moves to the right. He's chosen the outside line around the uh, hairpin and he just makes it work. That's Absolutely. really, really good driving. Good respect given also by uh, Ben. Guys, yeah, Scooter is on a mission. He is on a mission now. He is right under the wing of Squidly, and he's saying, I'm not hanging around this time. I'm getting no. going to get past you, and I'm leaving you, Blacks. <laughs> Squidly is, is he's certainly coming under fire. Scooter seems to have learned his lesson, and as you say, he wants to really get in that first position and pull away from the field. So he's already broken out. There's that half a second gap, so it's just going to be enough for a slipstream drain down the front straight here. Uh, everyone following behind. No, Jones I, I think that's right. 
Corbin. I think that everyone following him behind. I think that first stint that uh, just glitched out has given Scooter 82 a lot of confidence to say, God, I, I can actually go a lot harder here and my, my mm. tyres and my pace are going to maintain uh, with these guys if uh, if I can push it a little bit harder. So th- and that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, I think he's yes. going to work with the sweep now. They're going to try and cap the field. Yeah, I certainly think they do need to break that slipstream back to Ben, which is only just happening now. If they can work together for a few laps, break that stream slipstream effect, and then uh, then they can start to duel it out as best as they can. I don't think Scoot's yeah. going to make it too easy here. Having a restart, he had a great opening lap. Scoot is just getting wide on the exit of, of Degna 2. But he's, he's pushing. Tucking it off. He's pushing. He's not hanging about. We can see the tyre wear difference, or at least uh, Devil Racer and I can see the tyre tire deck difference between Scoot it is really noticeable even after a, a lap and a half we can really see a difference in tyre now so Jonesy coming under fire for fourth there by Troy so Troy obviously is showing his pace here in the, in the restart Jonesy might be getting caught up with, with Ben there he's, he's really going to want to try and get past as, as soon as he can now that Ben oh. is, is out by himself he's got most of the stream effect in front of him Troy and Cloquet just had a, a coming together through the spoon there, but Troy has been one of the big winners out of this restart. He would be uh, rubbing his hands together at that pit glitch. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely after that first lap in some last race, we can see Jonesy trying to go too wide with uh, with Ben there through 130. I does think better of him. Gonna have to try and tuck him behind that. Opens up the door for Troy. Oh, trying to Troy! Oh, Troy just pulls it up. Thinks better of trying to make a, a very late move there on Jonesy. So, still a big slipstream effect. We can see Corbin and Cloquet working together as well in the background. Really hoping that Jonesy's going to be able to make a move stick here. Squid is trying to keep in front of uh, Scooter there as we make a run down. So Jonesy's moving out, looking to make a move. He's side by side. He gets a clean run in turn one. Keeps it on track. Easily. And it's oh, sailed past Ben there in first turn. Well, he needed to do that because Squidly and Scooter 82 are starting to gap out. So he needed to get past wheel to wheel Ben. Uh, and like in the first race, he's he's got past wheel to wheel Ben, and now he needs to hunt down the leaders. Yeah, that was a brave. So he was able to... Fantastic yeah. movement again by Ben, showing that that gracious uh, space on track, a very valuable space on track. They were able to, to both keep their pace up as well. So I mean, realistically, Ben didn't lose out all that much by that that move on Jones TV. They've, they've not really dropped off the back of Scooter and Squid, so Jonesy being in third now with that small gap is certainly going to hope that Scooter is going out of Squid for that first position, which only means he's got to catch right back up. Oh, yeah, the untouchable has gone for a move on Corbin as well in the background. Sorry, Devil, for seventh place there. He's centred down the inside with a fantastic braking manoeuvre and gets in front. Right, well, uh, down at the rear with Zedi and Oh, no. Dodgy. What's happened to the Dodgy? I didn't see. He must have been involved in an incident. Oh, no. Turn... Sorry, lap one was, was 2 minutes 14 for him. So he's... Oh, unfortunate restart there for Dodgy. He's, yeah, three and a half seconds behind ZD there. His first lap was, was not that great. Completely yeah. unaware of what happened there. Must have had an excursion, I think. Maybe our, our, two medium, our two medium runners there, Daz Patron and Zedia, are running nose to tail as well. Yeah, they are. Patron's gotten back in front of Zedi. There was there was a bit of a, a swap and change for position there. We see Patron just running wide in 11th um, on, on the exit of 130 yard there. So Zedi's only just outside of the slip. I wonder if he's suffering going for that restart on mediums. Well, back up the front, Squidly, two tenths over Scooter 88 as they cross the start-finish line. And Squidly happy to stick behind him, didn't make a move. Probably wasn't yeah. close enough to make a move there, but... Oh, those... not close enough. Uh, Josie those... has been up and just closed that gap, so I'm not trying to talk over you there, but Troy and, and Ben are also going at it uh, through turn one. Ben losing another position while I'm lap later after, after Josie made a similar move. Yeah, and that's allowed, uh, that's allowed Jonesy to break away from that little gap. So he's uh, a battle pack of one at the moment in between uh, Squ- Squidly and Scooter 82 for the lead and then Troy HQ and that big train behind him. 
So uh, Jones, he, out, out by himself, he's not being attacked. He's just able to put down some good lap times now. We should see him uh, make that a three-car battle pack at the front. Again. Yeah, look, he's he's pulled in about half a second already. Oh, no, we see Troy got oh, the exit. Uh, Degler two it. there, but he's, yeah. he's saved it, but he's only, he, well, he's, he's just lost two positions there, so fantastic effort there to not go completely spearing off the wall. now he's under fire. He's oh, under he's fire. Up. He's got suit yeah, lad on the lad, outside. Corbin he's Spence. got they're, they're all chasing Ooh. him down now. This battle pack here coming into Spoon Curve is going to be very interesting. Who's going to win out? Who's going to show their muscles? Uh, Troy, looking like uh, he's actually come, come off better because Suplad uh, ends up doing the battle with Corbin. They figured themselves out on the second half of that of Spoon Corner. And, and, uh, yeah, Suplad. I think... I think they all went, this is going to end in tears if we try to battle through the spoon. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah. Just, let's just leave it at that and worry about it later. <laughs> yeah, look, it's only lap four at 28, and they've, they've had plenty of practice here. We see Suit Lad and Corbin going side by side. Oh, so there you are. Corbin going a little bit wide there. He's going to have dirty tyres under the braking zone into Casio. Pulls it up nicely. That was very ambitious for, for both drivers going side by side. Absolutely. Through, uh, one of the fastest sections of this course. You can take it flat when you get it right. But two oh, points. in six, Untouchables is about to make it. He's making a move on wheel to wheel. Ben, he's made the move. He needs to make it stick through turn one. Wow, and he's, he's going to do that comfortably. Wow. Done under the straight, even before the braking yeah. zone. That, that's a fantastic run onto that straight from Untouchables to get past Ben. So, unfortunately, a bit of a repeat to Ben there in, in our restart. He's, he's fallen victim to quite a number of drivers here. Uh, Ty, where is looking, um, again, uh, noticeably worse. And that, that sort of goes back to what we were saying earlier in that I think tyre wear is more important than fuel on this track. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a double-edged sword. You, you don't want to use too much fuel because you'll lose whatever time you make up in the pits. Um, so by, by using your tyres, you'll lose that time in the pits. But we can see a change of pace, uh, sorry, a change of lead. Uh, Scooter has been able to make his way past Squidly, and that he, little battle has. has certainly wiped that half a second off that, that Jonesy needed to be able to, to show his nose there. So, Jonesy, yeah, so he's in the slipstream now. He is. He's caught right back up, and I'm wondering if he's going to now play that a little bit of a longer game still is worse than those leading two. So my advice, if you can hear me, Jonesy, just tuck him behind that, that uh, slipstream train and, and hang on for dear life. Did you say he was your teammate? Ah, uh, maybe. Little, little <laughs> mental <laughs> mental messages being yeah. sent out to the ether. <laughs> <laughs> trying, to, trying to send him some good vibes. He, he needs a good round. <laughs> Well, Cloak 8 is uh, two seconds back from this battle, from our leading battle pack, uh, and he's got Untouchables behind him, who uh, just made the move on wheel to wheel Ben and, and has put a bit of uh, a one second gap on him already. Uh, so Untouchables will be looking to uh, get under the rear wing of, of Cloak 8 in the next lap or so and uh, see if he can make a move for fourth. He certainly will. Suit Lad is also looking very racy in eighth at the moment. He's got Spence for company just behind him, but he's also very, very close to Troy. He was, he was tight to make a move uh, through the, the latter half of this course. It'd be very interesting to see if he's able to, to get the jump. Ben is just outside of the suit stream from the as well. So, um, you know, Troy, Suit Lad and Spence, they're all going to be hot on the tail of Ben in a, in a matter of a lap, if not already now. So I think we had uh, Daz Patron, ZD and Troy HQ do our first round of pit stops at around, was it lap eight, lap eight, nine? Yep. Um, so you, you would expect uh, that ZD uh, and Daz Patron uh, going to lap or going to pit at around at the same time again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Troy being a big loser there on the exit of Dunlop. Sorry to cut you off there. He's um, he's come victim to both Suit Lad and Spence. He's not making it easy for Spence, though. Um, well, Troy has considerably worse front tyres than, than both yeah. of those sides of the Yeah, absolutely. His tyres, that's why he pitted earlier on softs in the first mm. one. Because is, is Troy on a controller as well? Do we know? Look, the last information I knew, he was on a oh. wheel with that. That doesn't mean that he's uh, been able to keep hold of it. 
Now, guys, in uh, 10th place, we've got Corbin coming under a, attack here from Zidi. Yeah, Corbin falling that, that earlier victim to, to running wide at 130R on the exit there brings Zidi on the mediums and also Dodgy with uh, with some earlier race race drama. Um, Dodgy may have come off again as well. As my screen is showing he's done a, a 2 minute 17 for lap 3. So Dodgy has, has potentially caused, caused himself some mischief. And, um, he's, he's well, Zidi is making a move down the back straight. Zidi going too wide with it's Corbin. Done. He, oh, he's done it. He's done before. Four turn in. That's a fantastic run up to the back straight there by Zidi here. And it takes up 10th place on medium tyres as well. Well, yeah, I was just going to mention that, Captain. We're six laps in, and uh, if we look at we look at Zidi's tyres, who is on the mediums, they're barely worn. Uh, but, of course, Corbin's on the softs. They've, they've had a hard life. <gasps> Scooter's left so, the room. Control of life. Oh. Where did Scooter go? Oh, has, no, he, has he had a disconnect? Oh, Possibly. that's unfortunate. He's been leading this race, and now he's all of a sudden disconnected and disappeared. Oh, Scooter, I'm feeling for you there, mate. Unlucky. That's that's oh, oh, wow. I'm the word. It's that, that just that's, ends the race. That's the heartbreak. Really. That is that's a heartbreak, the heartbreak wow. story of the night. Oh, Scooter. So, so we now have a two-car battle pack for the lead in uh, Squidley and Jonesy. Yeah, I'm not too sure what to make of that. Squiggly might have been looking to, to hang on for that slipstream, but yeah, having Scooter just, just disappear on him like that might uh, might be changing him up. But um, Jonesy has been able to reel in that delta on their fuel use as well, so interesting to see there. These two might be closer than we expect. Yeah, there's nothing in their tyre life, and there's only a bit in the fuel. Uh, and, of, and of course, Jonesy's used more, but he's, he's right up behind Squidly now, so they'll go another at least three laps, you would think. Yeah, I would be uh, thinking so. So that, he, Jonesy should be able to save a bit of fuel and, and save a bit of time in the pit stops over the next three laps if he stays behind Squidly. Yeah, that's going to be the big decider here, and it is it is mandatory in this race to do a medium stint. If we haven't had some of that before, we have seen a couple of drivers start on mediums for this race, for this restart. Um, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be very interesting to see. Uh, you know, if these two want to work together, and they've they've got equal strats. Um, you know, for for me, they could do nine, ten, or eleven on softs and, and come in for your first stint, and then do a set on mediums, and then finish off the race on softs. And having said that, these two might go alternate. Um, you know, Jonesy might be thinking, well, Squidley is in the lead. He's going to come in on medium for his second stint. I'm going to go on softs and, and get in front of him and try and build that gap and finish, finish strong as, as possible on, uh, on a set of softs. Yep. And, guys, just back in 10th, Corbin has uh, dropped off three and a half seconds off the tail of Zidi, who just overtook him in the previous lap. And, uh, look, Daz Patron, who is our other runner on mediums, is right on the tail of Corbin. Uh, Dodgy is there as well. Dodgy's on softs. Dodgy's softs are looking magnificent. Uh, but Corbin's tyres are toast. Yeah, Corbin being on that controller gang has had a rough stint with those with those softs there. Um, I can't help but feel Das Patron and, and Dodgy being held up just a little bit by this, but I'm sure they'll be able to get past uh, fairly quickly. Um, actually, They're we can see Troy. Troy. Well. He just had a moment. Oh, Troy. Turn two. Yeah, uh, and he, he had a, a terrible last lap from what I can see as well. Oh, his, his lap seven was two minutes 17, so about a comfortable eight or nine seconds off of where, where they should be. So Troy's fallen victim somewhere and, and certainly introduced himself into this, uh, this yes, battle pack. He and, hasn't been able to capitalise on that disconnect on, on the uh, restart, has he? On the restart, no. So unfortunately for Troy, he's, he's still got that bad luck hanging around him. Dodgy has been able to make a move on, on paper given the, the fact that he is on SOS. Um, I, would, I would suspect he's able to make a move on the form very soon as well. Gets a fantastic drive out of the hair. Oh, oh the le- up in the lead, Squidley has gone wide at the spot. Oh. And Jonesy has got through to the lead. He's six tenths up. He's just increasing that gap. He may. That, you like? He, yeah, yeah I think we'll absolutely. Need to. Let's have another look from Squidgy's point of view. Yeah, Squidly's just been able to hold on for that. Dips it that into the well. start of, yeah, he went deep into the start of Spoon. Very lucky not to spin it on the Astro. Regathers it by the exit of Spoon. So, all in all, not too much time lost. 
No, so so it's not often you can go wide at Spoon there, either on entry, mid-corner, or exit, any, anywhere in that Ooh, double left hand and, and be able Gross to save it. And, and it might not have been a lot of time lost, but he is out of the slip now. He doesn't, he's not getting the slip from Jonesy. So Jonesy's got the lead, and he's got it clear. He's not dragging Squidly with him. It's now out to 1.2 seconds. Oh, no doubt it's yeah. going to cost him, but it could have cost him a lot more, I can tell you that. Oh, yeah, it could have. So, <laughs> that was so a that, good save. That's a fantastic save there by Squidly. And yeah, it's not often you can go off there and, and still, uh, well, basically only lose one place and at about a second. Oh, that that AstroTurf, the minute, yeah, the minute you're on that AstroTurf oh. off the curve, you're looking at a spin. That was amazing the way he kept it together. Yeah, yeah could, couldn't agree more. So the only thing that Squid is going to be battling with now is the, the just taking that extra edge off of his tyres. So having a spin or going off track, it means you need to clear your tyres of that debris and, uh, and look to get your pace back. So... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he's able to, to manage this gap. But um, we do see Squid, uh, sorry, Zidi and Corbin, they've both come into the pits on the end of lap nine. Uh, sorry, end of lap eight on lap nine now. And um, we can report that we do not have a pit glitch. And Zidi and Corbin are, are back out on track and we can see them. DJ okay, well, Stephen reports that the AstroTurf is not uh, too harsh on the tyres, apparently. Oh, ah, there you <laughs> go. Spends enough time on it in practice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we've all spent a little bit of time out there, but uh, yeah, some, some are tougher more than others. So Jonesy with the race lead currently as we're coming into the end of lap nine. Used a little bit more fuel, probably, yeah, about that 10% margin than Squidly, but he has been able to break out that gap just a touch more. It's out to about 1.7, 1.8 seconds at the moment. Those two have been able to pull away from Cloquet there in third, running at about 4.3 seconds behind the Untouchables of Suit Lad being able to catch up to Cloquet there as well. So they've got a three way battle for third place. Yeah, and these guys are uh, in the order that they're in, um, with Suit Lad at the rear of that battle pack. He has the best tyres, Untouchables has the second best, and Cloquets are the worst. So yeah. uh, we, we, we could see the, the guys at the rear of that back, uh, the, the, the the back of that battle pack are going to be the quickest. Yeah, yeah, certainly. So Untouchables is, is seeing this battle and going, no, nah, I'm going to try this undercut. <laughs> See if I can get a bit yep. of free air. Free air around here is invaluable. If you can if you can get that. Oh, Cloquet. Sorry, I'm on with Cloquet. Yeah. He has a <laughs> big <laughs> moment. He um, saved. That was uh, close. Oh, that's, I mean, any moment off track there in turn one is a big moment. I mean, there, there are some that are bigger when you go right off, but, yeah, that's certainly one that uh, is going to go. A little brown moment for him, and, and this needs to be gather. So Suitland certainly put the pressure on, uh, on Cloquet there for third place. Yeah, and look, Cloquet's tyres are really just holding on at the moment. So with Suit Lad all over the back end of him, whose tyres are looking pretty good in comparison, uh, he's going to be feeling that pressure the whole way around. So he would be better off to pit sooner rather than later. I'd be very surprised if we don't see Cloquet in the pits at the end of this lap. There's a few pitting, I think, this lap. We're right in the window now, yeah. aren't we? Yep, yep. I, I certainly see, I think we'll see, uh, you know, Jonesy, Squidly, Cloquet, Suit Lad, uh, most likely Ben. Uh, Spence may be going slightly longer as his tyres and fuel are reasonably good. Um, but yeah, I would certainly think five out of the top six are, are going to be coming in at the end of this lap. Well, Jonesy's out to a two-second lead over Squidly now uh, and is continuing to increase it. So he's looking in he's in great position at the moment he certainly even is um, even with that additional fuel he he may just hold on to first place here if he's if he's lucky um, well they don't need to take on a full tank they don't need to take on all they need is uh, if they're going to do their mediums then yeah, uh, what they need to they, all they need to have is eight laps of fuel yep so that's yep. assuming possibly, they're going to do their medium stint next he's in yeah Jones possibly even yep. seven so Jonesy is in Squidly is in Squidly is in we're going to see him come in uh, yep, yes. okay, just in suit lad suit is in. There we go. Ben, is he going to go longer? Ben. He is. Ben's ben, going. Yep. All drivers is going longer. He's certainly got a lot uh, more fuel than the other drivers Spence around. Spence is so the last one I would have thought was going to go longer. Yeah. Yep, I would have expected Ben to come in as well. So, yeah, we see it's mattering of, of pit stops for uh, these front, front six runners so far. 
Yeah, yeah Hamza lead over to Ben. Um, I wonder if Ben's trying to go for a one stop here, trying to to realise what his lap times are and, and not go go for broke. Maybe that's why he was coming victim to uh, to several drivers in in the opening stint. Yeah, but can Ooh, he make Des, it on Des the Patron. Of the last? Ooh. Daz Patron yep. coming down the straight as our guys are coming out of the pits. So Squidley has come out in second, just ahead of Daz Patron. Uh, he so he's jumped Jonesy in the pits, and he's yes, got a one Squid and a half has, second lead. Yep. Squid has taken over that effective race lead. Patron is, is throwing a thorn in between the mix here for a third place. Um, this could be telling. I'm sure. Yeah, this could be very crucial here for Jonesy. Given the fact that Patron's on, on very old mediums, his pace difference is going to be huge here. As we see them exit Dunlop Corner, uh, Jonesy's got a fantastic run. I think that Patron made that easy, realised yes. that, that they are on different strats. Um, yes. You know, Patron is, is a fantastic driver. He's, he's from Argentina. It's, it's really good to see some international representatives from, uh, from different countries. And, that was yeah, he's, he's very polite of you. Yeah, absolutely. And that, look, they were racing for position. He didn't have to give it up, but no, it's, it is right. common race etiquette to say, look, I'm, I'm yep. not in the same strategy. We're not racing each other. Yep. Off you, off you go. No, but these two are probably the effective leaders uh, once all the pits are done. So that was very, very yeah. good of him to, to not mess with the uh, lead of the race like that. Yeah, fantastic race etiquette there as, as displayed by patrons. So, um, yeah, as no, you say, no. effective race leaders are still good. Jonesy and uh, Ben coming in hopefully on lap 14. We'll see what he does as he as he runs Casio Triangle. Yeah, it'll and be the, interesting the other to see if the one stopper uh, is attempted out of this lot. Yeah, look, he's going around again, Devil. Sorry, we, we keep cutting off. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, the the other guys that pitted, uh, Suit Lad and Cloakade, uh, was, was Clu- I'm pretty sure Cloakade was ahead of Suit Lad when they went into the pits. But Suit Lad uh, has come out uh, come out ahead of him. Yeah, yeah it depends if they fuel tires. for seven or eight lap stints on the medium, so... Uh, the fuel is looking extremely similar between those two, so I would think they're on exactly the same strategy there we see. So, so Patron coming in on the end of lap 11, getting off his medium, still with a, quite a decent amount of fuel there, so might see Patron getting off uh, with a, a decent decent stint there on, on mediums and might be one to watch out in the later half of this, this race as he is only going to be on softs now um, both of the field in front of him is going to be on mediums so so tides a turn for him there. Yeah that's a long time to run the mediums for I think so I'm not quite sure about that strategy but we'll see yeah, look, his, his last couple of laps have been in the tens with one. Oh no, tens are. Yeah, so last couple of laps have been in the tens with one thirteen, um, with, a, with a two minute thirteen there. So yeah, his lap times have, have dropped off on the later half of that medium stint. Maybe he did just go one lap too long um, and cost himself, you know, valuable three three and a half yeah, four seconds. Considering that the rest of the field on their two stops will probably only do seven or eight laps on mediums to do yeah. eleven like that is is a little bit uh, uh, advantageous possibly. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's very advantageous of Patron, uh, but hey, he's, he's been able to show his pace. Uh, he's, he's fairly new to the league, but he's certainly been able to show he can he can hang with some of the big guys. So, uh, yeah. yeah he's go, you guys just... Just up the front, and, and I know you guys mentioned it, and, and I almost dismissed it, but uh, wheel-to-wheel Ben, 17 seconds out in the front, on his softs, uh, at the end of lap 12, he only has to do another two laps, and then he's got 14 laps on mediums to do. He's got the fuel to go two laps. If he doesn't go in this lap to pit, he's, going for it. he's, 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 going sure, for he's it. doing a one-stop... Yeah. 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 And he yep. is, yep. Interesting. He's absolutely going for a one-stop here. So Squidley has been able to pull down about two seconds. Uh, the, the gap was about 19, high 19 seconds between Ben and Squid on, I think, halfway through lap 11. So it's about one and a half seconds a lap from, from what I said. Oh, no, oh, we've talked about Ben too much. Yeah, straight to... Oh. <laughs> he's gone wide in turn one there. That gap Unlucky. is going to be coming right down. We were yeah, talking too much about you, Ben. The old comms curse has, has again reared its ugly head, so that, yeah, will cost him a. He must have known the camera was on him. <laughs> definitely <laughs> worth keeping an Yeah, definitely worth keeping an eye on him because as the field sits at the moment, everyone has one pit stop to go, and he's yeah. 14 seconds ahead. Yep. 
So yep, uh, it's definitely one to ask. keep an eye on. Yeah, it is going to be a big ask of the two stoppers to be able to make this strap work. Uh, we see Squid and Jonesy nose to tail again. Those have been inseparable for, for both the first race and the restart here. So Yeah, and if they start yeah. battling, that's that's only going to come into the hands of, uh, or fall into the hands of Will, Will Ben then. If he needs these guys to start battling and, and chew up their tyres and, and use each other's time and do all the things yeah. that uh, the dri- drivers hate being done to them uh, while he just sits out the front. Yeah, and if Ben can yeah. make 14, uh, the softs last 14 laps, he should be able to make the mediums last 14. Yeah, and the pace yeah. won't drop off anywhere near as much. Uh, mind you, you, when we look at his lap times, he's consistently 210, 211. He's, his lap times have actually been really consistent. They have been, yeah. So even though his tyres are looking extremely wet, bad for wear, he is doing the one stop here. So that is that is more to be expected that, uh, yeah, his tyre wear is going to be worse. And, yeah, as you say, he is a smattering of, of lap times in the 11s here. It's super consistent. His last two laps have been within 0.02 of a second of each other. So <laughs> that is, uh, my hat goes off, that is outstanding. I didn't yeah. expect we would see a one-stop race tonight from anyone. So this, no. is, uh, this is quite exciting. It actually is. It's, it's certainly opening up the strategy, and it's, it's uh, given Bill will be that free air that is so desperately needed around this track. Um, Jonesy and, and Sue Lab to second and third are still relatively nose to tail, but Squid has been able to keep that keep that delta just above slipstream range there. So it's only going to hurt Jonesy when he's, he's trying to uh, catch back up and get back into that slip. Oh, yeah, I see. His I see why it's going to going to cost. He's going to need a full tank of fuel. So. Well, the other guys, well, sure, I, I guess. I see the fuel, the fuel difference between Squidly and Jonesy. Jonesy's got uh, a fair bit more fuel on board than than Squidly, so he must have taken a lot more on in that last pit stop. Uh, even though he was down a little bit, he's got a lot more in his tank now than Squidly, so uh, his so next pit stop a, could be yes, a lot, yeah, a lot shorter. Yeah, that truly depends on how much fuel they're going to use. So it'll be interesting to watch the delta between the fuel use and, and see towards the end of the stint if Jonesy using that little extra fuel is going to catch back up to Squidly and Jonesy is, is going to need to put in more fuel comparatively to Squid to see how the end yeah, of the Yeah, he's bought so. himself some options, hasn't he? He can go that one extra lap if he wants. Yeah. Uh, or he can uh, sit there in the slip and uh, enjoy a shorter next stop. Yep, yep, absolutely. Maybe Jonesy has realised that he, he doesn't like being out in front and wants to, wants to sit behind a, an equivalently cased uh, Div 1 driver in, in Squidly. So, yeah, very very interesting to see what the next pit stops will, will hand us. That leads down to uh, 10 seconds now. Yeah, so Squidly certainly making that move uh, on, on his comedian stead to pull, yeah, another six seconds out of Ben. Uh, in these last couple of laps. So if Ben didn't have that spin, he'd probably be another further, uh, what, four seconds up the road. Um, looking yeah, at his lap what, times, that spin what, cost him what, exactly four seconds. His, his lap 12 was 211.764. His lap 13 was 214.764. Yeah. And, and we'll that see, is, Ben. Ben yeah. should pit this lap. So we're, he's coming through Casio and he's, yeah, he's into the pits. Down. So he's, he's going to come out of the pits on fresh mediums. Uh, so he's at, you would think that the first few laps, he's actually going to be, uh, well, for quite a few laps on mediums, he's going to be quicker than uh, Squidly and Jonesy because his tyres are fresher. Uh, but with that controller, he does he does burn through them quicker. He just mm. needs to make the most of it while he's got good tyre. Yeah, the pit stops here are giant as well, so Ben will not be coming out anywhere near Jonesy and Squid on track at this point in time. Having said that, this is the one and only pit stop for Ben here, so the, the boys that are they're on the two-stop strat are certainly going to have to try and make that, that difference uh, of the additional pit stop up in, in race time. Yep. And guys, in third, we've, we've Suit Lad and, and Cloak Aid uh, in fourth. Those guys are bringing down the gap to Jonesy, too. It was uh, at about four and a half seconds after the pit stop. We're down to 3.6 now. 
Yeah, I think Jonesy may have had a small moment there because he has dropped off by about Ooh, half a second on Squidly. So yeah, he's he's just trying to manage that that tire uh, that time difference between first and and third. So and Ben's you know, pulled out thirty seconds behind the leaders. Yeah, there you go. So pit stop looking towards the high forty seconds when you're doing. Uh, sorry, high thirty seconds uh, towards forty seconds total. Uh, got time to do tyres and a and a green fuel tank. So very interesting. Oh, we've got yellow flags just in front of Ben. Why do we have yellow flags? Somebody's off. Untouchables was off on the exit of Degna two. There, he's going to come under fire by Troy in a minute here. So unsure why I haven't been able to caught the caught the yellows and Untouchables was unfortunately victim to to. Too. Yeah, well, he has got Troy right up all over him now. So, Troy, both on mediums. This will be. Uh, Sorry, right guys, I missed that replay. No, no, not quite get it. Sorry about that. No stress at all. So yeah, we do see uh, Cloquet just edging into the six stream in fourth for the battle third between him and Superbad. That's that gap has been ever uh, closing ever so slightly as, as this stint has gone on. Both on both on medium tyres, Cloquet with his for a couple of percent more fuel. We see him now well and truly into the sweep stream. And so he back, even did back the back and move in the in the first turn. No, it's guys, back in, back in 11th, we've got uh, Daz Patron now, who's uh, running on the softs. Uh, only we're right up on the, the rear bumper of Dodgy. So he'll be looking to make a move on Dodgy. I would imagine at the end of this straight, he's... Yeah, he's going to be tucking in, trying to get that slip yep, effect. Yep, he's moved he's out. Already moved out. Oh, that's a fantastic overspeed there. Dodgy, I don't think is going to make it too hard for him. Uh, having said that, he's trying oh. to hold it around the outside, and indeed he does. And he Dodgy does. Breaking maneuver there. But it's Leaping not an odd, oh, yes, no, no, he's right in. There. Patron tries to show the nose there, but Dodgy holding out Patron, even though he is on the quicker tyre and with an overspeed on the start finish straight. Dodgy showing moves there and, and really wanting to hold on to that 10th place. Yeah, absolutely. That was incredibly skillful to be able to hold that through there on the mediums against a soft driver, uh, against a, a driver on soft tyres. That was unbelievable to watch that. Outside but he's all over him. Oof, he's all over him, Daz Patron. He, he'll he's be looking to make up. another move very soon. <laughs> I'd be surprised if he doesn't get the overrun out of here. He just a little bit squirrely out of Daniel too, which is going to hurt him. He was looking good for, uh, for a dive down here into the hairpin. Dodgy covers well. It depends on who gets the better exit here. Patron oh. just getting again a bit squirrely on the exit of the hairpin. It's going to hurt him on his straight line speeds. So maybe that's why Dodgy's been able to see uh, where Patron's just losing that time and, and being able to hold out. He's driving yeah, well, look, Dodgy. His, his mirrors are absolutely full of that black Toyota 86 <laughs> yeah. at the moment. But uh, maybe Dodgy, uh, maybe Daz Patron's trying just a little bit too hard here because he, he'll be using up his tyres the way he's uh, getting squirrely on the exits, but he's having another crack yeah, here now. He is. It looks like he's gotten a better run. Being on those, those better tyres, he's been able to do a bit of a switch, switch back and crisscross. Uh, he's going to have the, the inside line here Ooh. in the yard. Uh, Dodgy thinks just better of it. Oh. Oh, uh, no, no, it's boss. not over. It's not it over. It's not over. These guys are going hard battle here. Even though they're on different tyres, they're not giving each other any room here. Uh, both of them are, yeah, yeah that's fantastic racing. Patrick does win out through the Casio Triangle. Being on those better tyres can break down a little bit later and really take advantage of yeah. it. Yeah, so, look, that was inevitable. But, wow, what a great battle it in from Dodgy. And I, did Untouchables just have to serve a penalty there? Or? I'm not sure. I saw him on the right-hand side of that main Maybe. straight. Maybe, yeah. I mean, if he... Have a look at replay if you want. Yeah, we might as well find out what happened there to, to the Portugals. Looks like he's just uh, defended but lost out to Ben, who's obviously on fresh tyres. So just didn't quite see the, um, the start of the straight, so we couldn't quite see okay. if he was burning a penalty or not. 
All right, well, wheel-to-wheel Ben making his way through on those fresher tyres. So the the one-stop strategy, uh, yeah, it's coming it's coming into play at the moment. But will it will it hold? Will he be able to hold this pace for uh, what have we got? Another eleven laps? Yeah, eleven laps. It's going to be a big ask here. He's certainly on track for fuel once more, so he's he's got that certainly figured out. But uh, you know, finish his seconds behind Squidly for the lead. A pit stop here is about forty seconds, depending on how much fuel uh, Squidly needs to put in. But uh, you know, this, this might open a bit of a race in in the final laps once Squidly, if indeed Ben gets out in front of Squidly. It, it, yeah, it be yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, Squidley and Jonesy will come out on softs, so they'll have a lot more pace than Ben over those uh, last few laps. Yeah, they will. And, and realistically, I don't think Ben is going to be in any position to defend too hardly, given no. the fact that he's he's going to be slower on the straights going for, for 14 laps on fuel, and he's also going to be worse on, on tie grip. So, look, as soon as Squidley and Jonesy catch up to him, it's, it's going to be an easy overtake. But catching up to him, that's, that's going to be the battle here, I think. Yeah, well, back up in the lead. Uh, Squidley's got a nice and comfortable lead now, just over two seconds on Jonesy. Uh, so, they, obviously, those guys aren't battling. They're just putting down lap after lap. And if we look at Squidley's lap times, uh, the last four laps, 209.5, with one of them a 209.496. So, very consistent, just laying it down lap after lap, and... Like Jonesy's a uh, two oh nines as well, but a couple of tenths more, so just a bit of a gap opening up. But those two are just very consistent, very neat driving. They're not wearing their tyres. They're not doing anything silly or outrageous, um, and continuing to maintain that four and a half second buffer to cloakade. Yeah, they've got clean track, so I think they're in the box seat, honestly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. spot on. And, yeah, that's the fantastic spot there. His uh, Squidly, his last four laps, like I say, have been 2 and 9 fives, with the exception of the 2 and 9 4 And even prior to that, uh, lap 12 and 13 have been a 2 and 9 6 and a 2 and 9 oh. 7. And if we actually look closer at that, they're 209, 578, 579, and 580. If that's Whoa. not a picture of consistency, <laughs> I don't know what is. Wow. Squidly showing that's off his class once more. That's, that's just hitting those brake markers, hitting those corners exactly where he needs to. So end of lap 18 here, it, oh, I mean, Squidly's not going to be able to go around again. Maybe Jonesy is going for a slightly longer stint on mediums because he's still got about a, an eighth, maybe a touch over an eighth of a tank. So eyes on Squidly in first. Is he going to come he's in? He's in. Squidly is in. Jonesy is also in. So he's going to have more oh. fuel here. Um, yeah, by about 10%. So that's going to be valuable time here. As we also see Suitlad and Cloquet coming into the pits. Uh, ZD coming into the pits as well. Over there is a flurry. Five, five, uh, six, five drivers. Ben's taking over Spence. the current yep, effective Spence race lead. Staying, yep. And Jones, he's got 14% and everyone else is on vapours. Yeah, so interesting move by Jonesy. I wonder if he, oh yeah, look, I'm, I'm not too sure what he was, uh, what, he, what he has in plan there. But again, having that 10 percent extra fuel on nearly everybody else in the pits around him is certainly going to uh, have Squidly worried there. Squidly, these two are going to come out. Here we go. Oh no, Jonesy's out. Squidly and So still two seconds in it. Yeah, so there was no no time time. lost or gained in the pits. Wow. No, so Jones is filled up uh, effectively the same same amount as Squidly, but he yeah. does have more fuel on board. So Jones might be looking to have that extra card up his sleeve. I mean, Squidly is going to now be held up by Patron untouchables in front of him and also potentially dead. So Squidly, again, patron making it easy on Squid. It's not often you get around the outside of someone on uh, on Dunlop curve their fifth place. And, so. and, and guys, they are 20 seconds... Uh, sorry, no, not 20 seconds. They are 20 seconds off the leader, but they are only one and a half seconds off Will Will Be. Oh, untouchables. Got oh. Now he's in the wall. Oh, super unfortunate there for untouchables. So they're getting out of the way of both Squidly and Jonesy there. Um, yeah, Squidly having that little bit less of a fuel here might fall victim to Jonesy if he's able to make use of it. Jonesy keeping that one extra card up his sleeve towards the end of the race. 
Well, Squidley hasn't used as much fuel in the previous two stints as Jonesy, so I just I just don't think he needs as much fuel as Jonesy. And he's past no, Patron too. Yeah, Patron certainly made it easy for him uh, once more to, to be able to get past. I think Patron again is, is realising that they're on completely different strats. Um, it looks like Patron's giving a bit of an indicator to Jonesy, maybe a bit of a bit of a heads up, you know, go this way and I'll go this way. But, um, I'm just going to need to pay close attention through ones where we are. So I need to dispose of Patron pretty quick. And in, in third, uh, Wheel to Wheel Ben and Squidly at the moment battling it out for what what is really the effective race lead. Yeah, correct. As we see only... Troy jump into the pits real quick. And so is Patron. So that opens up Jonesy there in, in taking effective uh, fourth place. So a matter of time, and here's the move now. Yeah, so what Squidly, what Squidly up the inside, easily done. On yeah, new soft tyres. Yep. Gets it done with that extra speed because he's, he's got the fuel on board to be able to go longer, uh, as well as the tyre life is the sale of the tyre grip. So very interesting to see that only one lap after the pit stops, Squidley's been able to catch up to Ben and really made that overtake. So... I'm not sure. Uh, is, has something happened to Ben here? Because he he was in a reasonable spot, having 30, 30 something seconds on the squid. Um, well, his his lap times wouldn't indicate he's had an issue. I, I think uh, I think what happened was uh, his last few laps on the medium sort of really hurt him, and they they um, mm. you know doing two oh nine, so that's two seconds a lap quicker than his pace. Yeah, look, that's very true. I mean, two-stop strategy looking like the, the certain favourable here. Squidly taking over what is effective race leaders, as we'll see Spence uh, coming into the pits. He's, he's not got enough fuel to go around the room, so... Very interesting here. I wonder if um, if Ben's going to make it difficult for Jonesy or if he's going to, to open up this uh, that, that opportunity for him. Um, I mean, Squid, 1.2 seconds ahead of Jonesy... Uh, sorry, ahead of Ben... And uh, Jonesy only goes three tenths behind Ben, so still I would imagine, a bit of time. Yeah, I would imagine Jonesy will get him down this straight, and yep, he's moved out. Better drive with those brand new soft tyres out of the spoon, yeah, and he's making good. the most of it. He'll have it done before the corner. Yep, yep. gets it done before corner turn in. Oh, he actually just had the grass there, I think, but he's able to manage it as he spends jump into the pitch as well. So he, I think, has done two stints on softs and will now be looking to do a final stint. Or maybe, was he one that started? No, he wasn't. He didn't start on medium, so he'll need to he'll need to jump on for now as, as his final stint. And so just before that last round of pit stops, the gap between Jonesy and Squidley was 2.2 seconds. It's uh, 1.5 now. So the, the race comes down to uh, Jonesy, Squidley, and, and what happens to that 1.5 seconds? Yeah, it's certainly a two-horse race as we as we have our pit stops all said and done now for these lead, leading three drivers. Uh, ben is honestly in a pretty good spot here. He's got about five and a half seconds on suit lad and, uh, and Chloe Cade and fourth and fifth. So uh, it's going to be a tough ask for Ben to be able to hold on to third, but, you know, he could he could finish top five here potentially. Um, if he can get yeah. together for the last seven laps. Absolutely. I would say Suit Lad's probably three, maybe four laps away from being on the tail of, of Wheel to Wheel Ben. Mm. Uh, Cloakade's probably another half a lap. Uh, but, yeah, he could definitely uh, hold out Zidi, who's uh, back in sixth place and a further four seconds behind Cloakade. Yeah, it's going to, be, going to be interesting, that's for sure. Ben's certainly thrown a spanner in the mix as to who's going to take out what spots. But, so, yeah, that, that gap between Squidley and Jonesy is, is near on inseparable. Both of them punching out some fantastic laps. Um, Jonesy with the 2.085 uh, with the uh, middle of an overtake. So, yeah, very impressive. And, and guys, back in eighth, uh, Daz Patron, who's on uh, brand new softs, has he? Well, he was in 12th uh, from the start on the mediums, uh, but and he's making some massive inroads here now. He's run soft through the second and third stint, seven laps to go. Uh, his outlap was a 206. He's ahead of the, the battle pack that is uh, for eighth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh. 
Yeah, 206, <laughs> mid 206 is an absolute flyer for an out mark. So, yeah, I mean, Patron, he was, he was slow off the mark on the first tip given he was on mediums, but again, has played the long game and, and is certainly in a, a good spot here. Yeah, and, and Spence, who's in seventh place and 20 seconds up the road from Dad's Patron, uh, look, he, with seven laps to go, there's half a chance Patron could catch him. Yeah, they're both very similar on fuel, but yeah, those that, that time lost on, on uh, medium versus softs is certainly not out of the question. It's a, it's a very big ask, but in the remaining seven laps, anything can happen. I'll well, back up the lead up at the, the pointy end of the field, squiggly maintaining a one and a half second gap over Jonesy. Uh, those those guys are circulating around, <laughs> not surprisingly, very consistent times. Uh, 208.9 and a 208.8 for Squidley, and a 208.5 and a 208.8 for Jonesy. So very consistent, very fast with those two. It's it's really about uh, what happens with that gap, as it and as I say that, it's down to 1.2. Yeah, we've also got a bit of a bit of a gap closing between Suit Lab and Cloquet. Cloquet does have the quickest lap with a 207.9, which is a, a fantastic pace there. So he's looking to, to close in that gap on Suit Lab, potentially get in front of him before they catch up to Ben. There's only 1.3 seconds the, the gap between Ben and Suit Lab at the moment. So going to be coming under fire from those two guys pretty quick. Yeah, and look, Suit Lad would want to um, hold that lead and then get in front of Ben before Cloquet catches him. Uh, and then hopefully Cloquet defends and makes life a bit tough on Cloquet would, uh, would would certainly help Suit Lad towards the end of this race. Yeah, it certainly would. I would expect uh, Ben to make the overtakes relatively easy. I mean, honestly, it's not like he has much of a choice being on a slow tyre and yep. going for 14 laps in the tank. It's it's not going to be much of a fight. It's just a matter of how stupid, like, uh, if he is able to hold off Cloquet before he gets past Ben. But it's, I mean, Cloquet is showing some fantastic pace here. He is, and poor Ben's going to have to short shift like uh, the devil is the to make uh, his stint work, so... Yeah, he really well, I think Cloquet could be lining up to make a move here. He is like Cloquet's lining up. He's lining he's up. Moved to to the move. He's moved yeah, to the inside. He's done yep. both and he's made it stick. He's a little bit wide on corner entry for the second half of the first hand, but it keeps it together and makes it stick. So, so now Cloquet is moving up and it's looking like he's going to be able to take third spot off Ben pretty quickly here. So yeah, fantastic move by Cloquet on, on Super Late in the first point. Yeah, look, it's only a matter of time now. He'll uh, he'll move into that final podium position, and uh, and then I would imagine battle it out with uh, Suit Lad, if Suit Lad can uh, hold on to him over the, the remaining five laps. I mean, Cloquet has shown some blistering pace. If he can keep that thing straight and on the black stuff, uh, it's going to be tough for Suit Lad to even just stay with him. Yeah, certainly will. They've both got to get past Ben. Yeah. Still, the double. double oh, well, here's the move. Here's the move. He's, he'll double back here. Oh, oh around the outside. Oh, no. Oh, on he's on the deep. marbles. Suit he's Lad's got him back. Back to Suit Lad. Oh, the cloquet oh it's not over. It's not over. Oh, <laughs> he's still yeah. going at it. it oh, no. Suit Lad losing out there from the slipstream effect that Cloquet was able to get on Ben. And he's now looking to say, thank you very much. I'm going to take that position off you as well. Oh, too wide. The entry into one uh, into Spoon Corner. Sorry, that's that's outstanding driving by wow. all three of these drivers. And Ben being able to hold off on these two very yeah. big drivers behind him on the medium tyre. Yeah, that was amazing by Ben, but it, you know, the, the extra exit speed that you get from those softs, yeah, he had nothing down this straight, and they're both going to get past him. But wow, what driving by Ben to hold him through the spoon there. That was amazing. Oh, fantastic effort from all three. Unfortunately, yeah, Ben, just showing that those differences between the highest, uh, on the highest corner, the speed corner of this of this track, the, the difference between mediums and softs there. But yeah, suit so like lag cloquet have certainly been released. So now it's, a, it's certainly a battle for, for who's going to round out the podium and who's going to take out the lead of, of this race. So that Yeah, gap and speaking of the lead, yes, yeah, but down almost in the draft now is Jonesy. So uh, with, with four, five laps to go, uh, Jonesy is edging in that gap ever so slightly every lap. Oh, actually, 
Oh, no, no, sorry. Yeah, this race is going to all come down to no one making any more mistakes, isn't it? Yeah, one of these top consistent. two makes a mistake. My boy Cloquet there, he's going to be ready to pounce. Only eight <laughs> seconds off the lead. It certainly is. I'm wondering if Suitlad is now seeing that as well. He can he can see the time difference between himself and the race lead, and uh, and understands that Jonesy and Squid are very close to each other. Uh, um, you know, maybe Suitlad's thinking the better of it is not going to battle them because they uh, or battle each other. They'll, they'll be on for a better spot here if they can potentially wrap up second and third. If, like you say, all these first two runners make a mistake. Yeah, well, Cloakade and Suitlad really just need to work together if they want that to happen. Um, they, they can't be battling each other. or well, They're just going to end up hurting themselves. <laughs> so an, an eight-second difference at the moment between Jonesy and Cloakade. Um, so Jonesy and, and Squidley could have an off. They could have a small mistake and, and still not lose position to Cloakade. So they, Cloakade and, and, and Suitlad really just need to work together over the next few laps if they want to bring that gap to down. Yeah, these guys are, are really inseparable for first and second and third and fourth there. Um, ben is, is very quickly falling into the crutches of, uh, of ZD there for six uh, or fifth and sixth. The time difference being only 1.2 seconds there. I think ZD's going to have uh, an easy job ahead of him in, a, in about a lap's time. Zidi is uh, moving up on wheel to wheel Ben now. One and a half seconds back. Uh, 1.2 seconds back. So he's, he's making big inroads. Strategies uh, hurting him now, I think. There are certainly drivers within the league, and I, I think of uh, Fang and I think of Oily, uh, who have exceptional tyre life, um, and they could possibly make that one stop strategy work. Bit hard with a controller on a track like this because you just don't get that that tire life. Yeah, very um, bold, look, very bold uh, choice I think today for Benny. I think he's had a roll of the dice and he's yep. yeah, yeah, had a punt, but uh, unfortunately hasn't worked this time. And Zidi is about is all over his tail now, so he's about to make that move, uh, and he'll get into the top five. Spence, as we said, was 20 seconds back a few laps ago. He's only eight seconds now. So Spence, I would imagine, is going to make the... He's going to be all over the back end of Ben over the next few laps as well. Yeah, he's Ben, making it easy on ZD there for this place. Uh, Ben's just went wide on the exit of, of Dunlop Corner. And ZD shot up the inside, so making that, that quite easy as ZD takes fifth place. And uh, he's probably going to stay there as we see Cloquet and, and Suitlet still in central. But only a couple of tenths, a couple of tenths between them. That gap for first is just breaking back out to about 1.3 again. Those two drivers are just, they're going for tip tap. Jonesy pulls it back in, Squidley pulls it back out. So, absolutely nothing in it. Those guys are, are going to be wanting to, uh, yeah, keep on this pace. As like you say, as soon as one of them makes a mistake, it's, it's game on. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the, there's nothing in the, the fuel between the two. They both have a quarter of a tank and I would say Squidley's tyres are slightly better than Jonesy's at the moment. Yeah, they definitely are. Squidley's tyres are, are wearing just that touch better than Jonesy's. Uh, and like I say, that, that fuel difference is now brought itself right down. So Jonesy looking to be on that faster faster car, but unfortunately Squidley's been able to manage and, and keep, that, keep that race pace going. Yeah, so really it, it comes down to managing that gap, managing mistakes, reducing them as much as possible. We haven't seen a lot of penalties in this race. In fact, I don't recall seeing any. The only one um, I saw was Untouchables. It was a very, very small one on the exit of Degna 2 there. So, yeah, Casio Triangle, potentially not claiming anyone that we've seen. Yep. Yeah, well, that was uh, that was where I was expecting to see a few, to be honest. Uh, but with, it's been a very clean race as far as penalties go. So any, uh, one penalty between any of these front four drivers then that's uh, that's given up the battle for them so with one and a half seconds between Squidley and, and Jonesy if, if either of those were to cop a three second penalty it's all over and uh, with only tenths between Cloakade and Superlad if they were to cop a penalty through Casio uh, it's all over for them as well so clean driving as few mistakes as possible and, uh, and avoid the penalties at all costs 
Oh, Suit Lad's about... Oh, no, no, we thought better of it. Suit Lad was about to make a move on Cloquet there, but pulled back in. These guys are going hard at it. Yeah, I don't think that gap uh, from from second to third is, is coming down anytime soon. In fact, it's, it's grown out to about 0.6 seconds. So, so lad, maybe looking to uh, to take that third position out of out of Cloquet there, but it's, uh, it's, it's dying. Last couple of laps here, it's, it's still anyone's game. Yeah, well, I'm looking at the tyre life on these two, and Suit Lad is, uh, it's not considerable, but it's definitely noticeable. His uh, tyre's better than Cloquet's, and uh, looking for drive out of the spoon, heading up the straight, he's he's got a better exit. He could get him coming in here. He does. They're going to go too wide through 130R here. Oh, oh he's they better are. Of it. Oh. Oh. That is extremely brave on old tyres this late in the game. Suit Lad does just have the edge on the tyres. There, but he's not going to know that over Cloquet. So, wow, very, very impressive driving there for both of them to keep it on track. But it, it looks like Super actually the bigger loser here because he's now just within slipstreams distance here. He's only just maintaining it. Uh, having said that, Zidi. Zidi's now showing his face uh, in, in this battle here. So, Super Lad and Cloquet are actually hurting themselves more than they Yes, they do.
welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We had just a little bit of an interruption there as Ando uh, unfortunately left our room, we lost our stream, but you've joined us back in, uh, right in the hot box as we see Squidly take the race win, 28 laps, it's finished four and a half seconds in front of Jonesy, rounding out our top two. Uh, suit lad ZD and Cloak Hate have been going battle for the last couple of laps. ZD has been able to make up one place on Cloak Hate, so Suit lad has also been able to jump up into third as we see ZD and Cloak Hate round out fourth and fifth. Ben on the one stop strategy, coming home in sixth after placing it on the front row. Spence right on his tail, rounding out seventh. And Daz Patron, who started on mediums and then came home with two stints on softs, has come through up to eighth uh, and 40 seconds off the lead. So great run from Daz Patron. Uh, I was really impressed with his second two stints there on softs. Uh, Troy HQ uh, had a few issues but recovered well for ninth. And uh, Dodgy86 uh, has, has come home for tenth. We've got uh, Untouchables rounding out uh, old number 11 and Corbin way back in 12th. Uh, he's had a, a drama-packed final stint with a 2.19, a 2.17 and a 2.14 lap times. His last time uh, laps have certainly not been something to remember for him, unfortunately. So yeah, Clocate uh, not doing as, as well as I'm sure he would have liked in this, in this Suzuka Enduro. Uh, hats, o- hats off to Squidly tonight. Um, four and a half one seconds over one, Jonesy. Congratu- congratulations. Great effort. Great racing between those two all night. Uh, and a couple of great battle packs that uh, we got a lot of entertainment out of. Yeah, fantastic driving and fantastic management from Squid and Jonesy to be able to, to, to stay tit for tat for each other until that final lap there. Uh, Jonesy was able to hold on um, just a, just a second away from Squid for for ninety nine percent of that race until the last lap there. So yeah, an hour and one twenty eight seconds and and just just under sh- you know, just a shave under twenty nine seconds there for total race time. That is that is very competitive. So would not be surprised if I see either of those drivers back in back in top split once we get to to round four. But again, uh, we we picked it from the start. Squidly and Jonesy are the the resident top split drivers and they've certainly showed their class here tonight rounding out first and second place yeah good uh, job guys fantastic race in, uh, in third position yeah absolutely good job and drivers and good job uh, commentators sorry about my disconnect there guys um, no no not at all it's not weird to wheel without some dramas if, <laughs> yeah. uh, if we didn't have a restart I'm sure we would have gotten the stream in before you disconnected but yeah, uh, that's, that's the way life rolls so I don't stress you're, you're doing a fantastic job on visuals the more the more you guys the more streams we do have so yeah, uh, you know I'm if anyone sure out there in the wheel to wheel world wants to join up and uh, get, in, get in touch with uh, any, any of the steward admin we'll uh, be happy to help out but um Gentlemen, I'm going to wrap it up there. We've, uh, both Ando and myself and, and Devil Racer all have our races to get to. So um, thank you again for joining here. It's been an action-packed uh, enduro, and I'm sure it's only going to be, uh, our night is going to be continued as we, we head into our races. So, gentlemen, good luck. Good night. Cheers, yeah, guys. Thanks, Captain. Cheers, cheers, Ando. Have a good night, guys.